In this video, we're gonna look at how to get an XML sitemap up and running on your website using the Yoast plugin for WordPress and how to connect that straight to Google so that you can get all the best information straight to the source. Welcome to another video. I'm Ashley from Mad Lemmings and we're gonna to today look at how to get an XML sitemap connected to Google Search Console. If you haven't already been on this channel, you can subscribe down below if you're interested in more content on how to optimize your website, WordPress, SEO, lots of tips and tricks, and let's get started. So if you haven't got WordPress Yoast SEO plugin connected already, you want to go to your plugins page and type in Yoast in the top right here. And then you'll see it on the top left and we just click install and then activate that and we should be good to go. All right, once you have Yoast installed, you'll have a new menu on the left hand side called SEO. We actually need to open up the advanced features to get to the sitemap. There's also a configuration wizard, but I don't recommend you do that because you don't really know what Yoast is doing under the hood. So we're going to dive right into the details. It's actually pretty simple. So first we go across the top to the features tab and then we activate or enable the advanced settings, which is the third one down here. And then we click save changes and then we get a whole bunch of menus on the left hand side. And what we're after is the XML sitemaps. And we just want to make sure that's enabled, which it should be. And you can test your XML sitemap by clicking on the blue link here. And it will show you your sitemap. And what we might also want to do is make sure we've configured any extra pages or posts or content that we've got on our website and make sure we're not including that in our sitemap in case we don't want it. So you can go across and decide on the kinds of posts that you want to include. And in general, I would recommend that you only include your pages and your posts, not the media, because WordPress creates pages for your attachments, which isn't particularly useful. So not including that is a good idea. You can also have a look at taxonomies. You probably don't want to include tags or post formatting. It depends on the theme you've got set up and the plugins you've got. Some plugins will create extra content types here. So double check what's on here and have a think about what you want showing up on search results. This isn't necessarily going to stop Google from finding something, but it stops wasting their time from looking at stuff that they may not be interested in. If you specifically want to block something, there's different ways to do that. And I have another video on how to discourage search engines. You want to take a look at that. You can block specific things and areas of your website and pages and posts. But this is another way of keeping lean and making sure your sitemap, which is a map of all your content, is only as big as it needs to be. Because if you have a big website, Google will crawl all of this stuff and you don't want more in there than is necessary. So uncheck the stuff. Categories is fine. Pages and posts is fine. Have a think about anything else that you may or may not want to include and click Save Changes. And then we need to go to the Google Search Console and I'll see you inside there. Once you've activated your sitemap in Yoast and logged into Google Search Console, which by the way, you should have already logged into and verified your website. That's part one of this process. If you haven't done that, jump over to my other video on that. It's called verifying your website with Webmaster or Search Console. So that's the first step. The second step is adding your sitemap. So once you've logged in, you press on the sitemaps on the right hand side here, and then you'll want to take your sitemap address and use it by clicking this add test sitemap button on the right hand side. So we go to test our sitemap again. We go back to sitemap and we test our sitemap and then you just want to grab the end of the URL here. So it's sitemap underscore index dot XML. And then we just paste that in here or you can type it in by hand if you want. So it's sitemap underscore index dot XML. And the first thing you want to do is test the sitemap to make sure Google can read it and verify it. And then once you've done that, you go back again to the sitemap, you come to this 
icon again and then you press submit. Now I've already done that for this website so I won't repeat that here. So you're basically doing the same thing twice. You press test the first time, you press submit the second time and pretty much Google will accept your sitemap and you won't see any of these statistics or bar graphs or anything for a while until Google has had a chance to come and visit your website. It might take a few days. But once you've done that, you're good to go and Google knows what content is on your website from now until the future. You don't need to do this again. You only need to do this once and now you're good to go. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just subscribe by hitting the button below on the right hand side and I'll see you guys in the next video.